Hey there, Corporal River here. Out in the boondocks, doing uh, honey badger boondocking. That's what we call it, honey badger boondocking. So I'm out here on a new trail that I've never been on before, just seeing how things go. Uh, very quiet. Notice something way up in the trees there. It looks like it might be a, a hornet's nest. Uh, this is the path least traveled. Doesn't look like Waterworks or the uh, Forestry Service brings their vehicles up this way. So I'm just going to keep on going down. And if I see anything interesting, I mean, I'll I'll point it out. I'll, I'll shoot a video. Uh, the whole purpose of this video is just getting out in the woods um, bringing bringing you guys along with me so I mean there's no real I don't have any real intent just entertainment value you guys can see me out in the woods um, I, I have my fishing pole with me and if I uh, find some water out this way I'll I'll certainly throw it in uh, but I'm just kind of curious about this particular path. So I'm gonna keep going down and see where it goes. And uh, <clears throat> once I'm satisfied with that, I'm gonna go back up the path and head down towards the, uh, head down towards the water and just kind of pick a spot. Uh, maybe uh, I'll brew a cup of, uh, I'll boil some water. I brought my uh, propane stove, so uh, I'll brew, I'll boil some water and make a cup of coffee. Um, I hope that's okay. Uh, out here the you know the rules say no open flames and only uh, they say you can use contained flames like charcoal and no open flames technically you know my little butane propane stove is uh, isobutane stove it's really isobutane got one of those little little things that screw on the top uh, it's very compact uh, technically that's an open flame um, I saw the waterworks people out here earlier, but I, I was too far away. I couldn't catch up to them. Uh, they were driving their truck around. So I wanted to really ask that question and see how they would how they would feel about that. If I boiled, boiled some water in an isobutane stove, camp stove, and just made some coffee. Uh, you can pay a pretty stiff fine for disobeying the rules out here. So I'm trying to, trying to do the right things. Um, I may take a chance with the isobutane stove. Once I get down by the water, we'll see. All right. That's about it for now. I'm going to uh, continue on. So I've been following these trails out behind Tower Hill uh, Reservoir. And uh, I was, I think they're, they're really snowm snowmobile trails. And uh, I found one sign that said Clubhouse Ahead. So that kind of piqued my interest. And uh, <laughs> I've been following a couple signs now that says Clubhouse Ahead. And I was just coming up the trail. And uh, I said, well, I'll just go up to the bend and see, you know, if the clubhouse is anywhere in sight. But being as how these are snowmobile trails it could be miles down the road or down the trail here so uh i'm at this point i'm gonna just stop and uh i think i'm gonna boil some water right here in the middle of nowhere because i am in the middle of nowhere i'd be really surprised if somebody came down this trail uh it doesn't look like it's been driven on in a while although you could very well easily get a truck down here or let's see the forestry service and the water management team could get their trucks down here but this is pretty far out here so I'm gonna take a chance and heat up some water take a rest and uh, head back all right well I'm just going to uh... Take a break, boil some water. I 
I got a little stove here. Shouldn't be a problem. I gotta rinse this out just a tad. Some scum in there. <laughs> I'm gonna make just a small coffee, not a whole lot, but enough. Take a sip of this water because I'm a little parched. Put that back in there. Here. I'll grab my lighter. Big lighter. There. Just that simple. Just a little stove. It's plenty wet out here. So I don't think there'll be a problem. And let's take a seat right here. So out here enjoying nature a little bit. I'm on the trail. Get a fair, fair bit of a hike back, so I'm just going to take a break here and uh, make a little coffee. I got some uh, instant coffee right here, and some sweet drops right here. So it won't take long for this thing to uh, boil. This isobutane is very good. Works very, very good. Like I say, I'd be very surprised uh, if anybody was to come up here where I'm at right now. But you never know. There, a little bit better view. Me sitting on my butt on the ground because I didn't bring my chair, but that would have been one more thing for me to carry. I really like the chair, but uh, I don't know. I don't have a great way to carry it. I'm not into carrying a lot of things when I'm on the trail. I like to keep it simple. That's why I have my uh, my MK2. You can get this this little backpack on Amazon. I'll put a, a link in the description. Um, you can check it out. I think it was like fifty bucks, but it's like. A, it's kind of a fanny pack, but it's got a lot of good features to it. It's got two two pockets on either side of the main compartment where you can put water bottles or, uh, you know, nested canteen cups. Um, so there's plenty of uh, availability for that. Uh, the main pocket is big enough to put a lot of stuff. I mean, 
you could easily carry the you know the 10 C's you know a small version of the 10 C's in in the MK2 so yep here I am let's see how it's doing yeah pretty soon it'll be boiling it's fast Now I've got a fork and a spoon in here, and I would have thought uh, I would have put the spoon. Uh, evidently, evidently I didn't put the I didn't put the spoon, but I did put a a fork and a titanium knife. Well, titanium butter knife which I also got on Amazon. Let's see how it's doing. Almost done. I'm gonna put a little coffee in there. And shut the stove down. Oh, actually, I also have a cigar. I may just have my cigar too. So I really like these uh, little isobutane stoves. Super convenient, really safe, especially, you know, if it's not with, I mean, it's very wet out here today, but so I don't have to worry about fires, even if you were gonna really start a fire, everything is wet, but, uh, a lot of places don't take kindly to fires, so if you want to be safe in the wilderness, we have the technology. So just carry a little isobutane stove or whatever you whatever you want. You can get everything on Amazon. Everything's on Amazon. Um, and I mean, look how convenient it is. Little little thing like that. And this, I got this stuff at Walmart. Actually, this fuel and this little burner, uh, compact burner, came from Walmart. Very inexpensive, and uh, everybody has a Walmart right next to them, and it works fine. You can get more expensive titanium versions of the stoves, but you don't really need it. I just moved the stove down a little bit where I could see it better. Sitting comfortably on my buttocks. Watching my water boil. It's very quiet out here. <laughs> me out in the middle of nowhere with a fishing pole and there's water not real no water really close to me right now I should have brought the little tiny chairs I have there they're really small but uh, they're really low to the ground but at least they keep your butt off the ground I'm gonna have to start carrying the smaller chairs just for occasions like this Yeah, they were very cheap. I got those on Amazon for like seven bucks. They're very, they're very tiny. I mean, really like maybe seven inches off the ground. So it's kind of hard to <laughs> squat and sit. First time I tried it, I fell over backwards in the house. It was so funny. My mother-in-law laughed. She laughed so hard at me. It was amazing. Close enough, I think, for the water.
water done. A little of my instant coffee in there. A little bit of this uh, stevia sweetener. Woodpecker. I hear a woodpecker. Put that away. coffee right here. Just a minute to cool off. Give that give the top a minute to cool off and then I'll see that Walmart. Inexpensive. Maybe ten bucks. It's perfectly fine. sitting on a log looks like my I'm in view so that's good uh, I'll tell you, that stove really keeps, uh, well, really gets things hot. It's Monday, I took the day off. Did I really need to? No. Did I want to? Yes. What's today's date? Ten twenty-eight on November the fifteenth. I'll be retired. I've mentioned that already. I'm sure. brought a cigar with me. I think I'll have my cigar while I'm sitting here. 
Um, just, just gonna talk. This is a Cohibus. Cohibus are supposedly uh, from where is that place? Cuba. They're supposedly from Cuba. Um, But I got this one from a, a gas station in Pinardville. I buy them. There's like it's a little a little um, tin of them. There's a a bunch of them, like maybe ten like maybe ten cigars in a row, ten small ones. It's a good deal. Um, I I mean they keep they keep them stocked and when they don't uh if i let them know they'll restock for me <laughs> now in here i also have a cigar cutter because it really it's not very convenient to cut the end off. You're supposed to cut the end off your cigar, okay? So it's you can do it with a knife, but it doesn't come out very very nice. So I have this little cutter. You stick the tip in there, and it cut makes a nice clean cut, beautiful cut. You just got to cut the tip off. See, you watch. And it makes a nice clean cut all the way around. Otherwise it can get messy. Came with this nice little, nice little pouch. All right. Great little wind out here. See that? So very excited about retiring. I'm gonna do a lot more of this. Okay, that's. You see, these things just they, they hold together like that, and then you can take them out, and then they just they hold over like that. If you think that's small, you want to pay a little bit more money for them, you can get them really tiny. <laughs> you can get them so that they weigh, they weigh ounces, a lot less ounces than this one does. But I'll put that away now, just in case. Yes, sir. I, uh, my daughter bought this knife for me. Uh, at uh, we're up at the Weir's Beach, and we're we I love knives, and so I'm always looking to buy another one. It's kind of a little bit of an addiction, 
Anyway, we're up at Weir's Beach, and she bought this for me, $75. And uh, it's the one I carry with me all the time. It's my belt knife. Um, so, when I was thinking about making YouTube videos, I was thinking I want to figure out how to put an equipment list on there, because everybody does. And I didn't remember where we got this knife. It was just a vendor in Weir's Beach, and there was no name on the knife at all. So, uh... I was looking around Amazon and uh, lo and behold, I bumped into my knife on Amazon. It's a Gracie knife, G-R-A-C-E, Grace, or not Gracie, but just Grace. It's a Grace. The knife maker is called Grace. It's Grace Knife Maker, and so you can buy that exact knife. Uh, it's a kind. It's a Damascus steel. Um, so yeah, I like it. Uh, like I said, it's a great knife. Uh, recently, I bought some. Uh, Bought some some various grades of sandpaper, and uh, I saw a YouTube video. On putting convex grind, how do, how do you put a convex grind on on things? And there was this one guy. I mean, people pay him to sharpen their knives, and he uses like a, a flat piece of wood with a little rubber backing on it. And he just buys the flat, you know, the pieces of sandpaper, maybe they're four inches wide or so, four or five inches wide. And they're different grades. Like I, I, I think he had like a, a 220, a 400, 600, 800 and a thousand. And by, you know, by the end of the, by, by the time he's done, you know, he ends up on the thousand grit sandpaper uh, maybe there's one more than that. And anyway, he puts a wonderful convex grind. A convex grind is a really good, uh, it's a really stable, it's a strong, it's a strong grind. So if you're not sure what a convex grind is, you can look that up on YouTube because that's where I learn everything from too. Uh, thank God for, for YouTube. I love YouTube. And I'm going to continue to, to make videos. Uh... Hopefully my content will get better. I'm kind of new at this. I did a bunch of videos a while ago and uh, I didn't really like how they turned out. So I kind of, I removed them. Um, maybe I, maybe I shouldn't have done that, but I'm gonna, starting with this video here, I, I'm gonna try to, you know what, I don't care. I'm just gonna make videos. Um, I'm so thankful that all the people that are on YouTube make videos because I've learned so much from watching YouTube videos. And I get something different from everybody. And I mean, you know, uh, some, some, some you like, some you don't, but it seems like everybody has something to offer. And it's like, I seen a commercial one time where the guy says, you know what? He said, just, just do what you do because somebody's going to like it. And so I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to contribute to YouTube. Um, I can't even imagine how YouTube does it. There's so many people making videos. Uh, the storage requirements must be incredible. The networking, what a, what a wonderful company. Uh, but I'm going to do my little YouTube thing and I'm going to make my little contribution. And hopefully somebody out there is going to like something that I do, even if it is talk too much. Um, I'm talking a lot right now because I don't really have anything in particular to do or to show you except you know like obviously this is a stanley cup all right it comes with a cover and there were two little cups inside i i bought this from you uh i bought this from walmart also uh 
but you know I learned on YouTube right you're gonna you're gonna use a stainless steel cup because you can put a stainless steel cup in the fire if you need to boil water out in the wild because you ran out of water you're gonna need to boil water so you got to have a stainless steel cup you got to have a metal cup and it's nice to have a nesting cup something that this can fit into um, I have that in the other side of my mk2 I have a, a, a cool uh, hold on let me sh I'll show you I have a clean canteen right uh, I learned about clean canteen on on YouTube um, and I actually had one of these hanging around the house I really really didn't know <laughs> what I had and then I realized because it's it's a single walled stainless steel so I can you can throw I could also throw this in the fire take the cover off obviously and I can boil water in this too and I I remember thinking I had when I first seen this before I started you know learning about bushcrafting and stuff like that uh, I was wow it's a single walled if you put hot water in here man you burn your hands right and I was like oh that's not very convenient but uh, there's a good reason for that anyway that clean canteen that I had hanging around my house um, turns out to be a good thing. It's an 18 slash 8 stainless steel. Uh, I'm gonna get more. I, I, I'm gonna get more of those It also I have a stainless steel cup that it fits into on the uh, right side of my mk2 uh, Stainless steel that's the way to go nested stainless steel um, Another thing that you know, it's good to know about in bushcrafting is anything that has space like an empty canteen or, or an empty cup you want to fill that with something because you want to utilize all the space you have when you're out and about um, because space is at a premium you don't want to leave anything empty like I had some stuff inside this cup on my way up here that I had to take while well, the coffee was in here they, my little blue coffee container was in here and also uh, I had a little a little roll of um, gorilla tape in here so you any any empty space you fill it with something uh, don't leave anything empty pack everything tight uh, I learned that on YouTube too some things you might think would be obvious but uh, not necessarily obvious until you get out in the woods and you start doing this stuff did I say I was filming filming on my iPhone and I have an iPhone 10s uh, the uh, the XS max great phone great camera don't need any other camera matter of fact I have some digital camera at home that uh, I don't know five years or more ago I bought it from my mother-in-law but she didn't really like it because it was too much of a camera it was too big she likes the little handheld ones that are point-and-shoot cameras so anyway it's a DLR or a DSL or whatever it is but uh, I don't really like it too much it doesn't auto focus so you have to be in charge of the focus manually my iPhone just takes care of the focus for me and um, and the pictures are wonderful <laughs> I'm filming at 1080p right now 60 frames per second so it should be beautiful uh, I know the iPhone 11 Pro is out Ooh. <laughs> yeah I gotta find a way to get that see my wife is not going to really go along with that, so I'll have to figure out a way to sneak that by. I'm not sure how, but um, if you have any comments or ideas um, on how I could do that, uh, put it in the comments below for me, please. I could use some help. <laughs> but I, I got to get that phone. It's got three cameras, and I use my I use my iPhone camera for everything, right? It's 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 my go-to camera. It's my bushcraft camera. That's what I do. Uh, I've been toying with the idea of getting a GoPro, a Hero 7. I don't know if I should or not. Um, what do you think? Should I continue filming with my iPhone or should I get one of the GoPros? Um, what are your thoughts on that? Put that down in the comment section for me, please. I can, I can use all the help. So I can use all the help I can, I can get. So chime in. Uh, if you like my video, um, please go ahead and like it and subscribe. Uh, I'll be trying to get regular videos out after November 15th when I'm actually retired. I'm going to try to do regular videos. I would say I'll shoot for one a week. It'll be something. I might be out in the field. I might be, uh, you know, at home, uh, an indoor video. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do 
you know, in the winter, not much of a winter sports guy, but maybe I could do some snowshoeing, but that's not very interesting for a, a YouTube video. I might do a, a quick, I could, I suppose I could, I could do like a short snowshoe into the woods and, you know, find a spot and boil a cup of water and sit down and chew the fat with you guys, right? I mean, why not, right? I could do that. I could get work on chewing the fat, right? I could get really good at that. And maybe that's good enough, right? If I'm talking about interesting things, uh, maybe, you know, I can keep you with me. Uh, I'll work on that. Um, it's a work in progress. So I'm a work in progress. Oh, yeah. Evidently, I'm talking too much because I can't keep my cigar lit. Uh, Cohibas. Yeah, little Cohibas. So if you're, if you're just coming in, I'm Corporal Rivet with the Honey Badger Boondocking. I chose the word boondocking because um, there's already a YouTuber out there. Is he's Honey Badger, and I, I, I gotta have the Honey Badger. I love, I love that Honey Badger. Um, if you don't know what a Honey Badger is, please look it up. Uh, look up Honey Badger. There's a really cool video. There's a guy narrating a Honey Badger, and run, this Honey Badger is running around doing all the things that Honey Badgers do, and it's really, really funny. Uh, you have to watch that. So, kind of like fell in love with the honey badger. So, I got honey badger. And I was going to say, I really wanted to call it honey honey badger bush bushcrafting. Which I did for, in the beginning. But then I, I bumped into another YouTuber who was also honey badger bush bushcraft. Uh, and so, I said, well, I really can't do that. So, out of respect, I changed my name to Boondocking. Now, you might say, where did I get that word boondocking? You can look that up, too. It's kind of like bushcrafting, just a different term. My grandson, my oldest grandson, uh, I got that term from him. He he calls it, you know, being out in the bush, he calls it boondocking. So I say, hey, you know what? I don't think anybody's got that, so I'm going to use boondocking. So it's Honey Badger boon Boondocking. I'm Corporal Rivet, and this is Honey Badger Boondocking. So I'm going to try to do, as time goes on, I'm going to try to do um, specific videos on, you know, uh, woodsman skills, boondocking skills, if you will. I'll call them boondocking. Same as when I say boondocking, I'm going to, I'm going to, I want you to know that that means bushcrafting or bushcrafting skills or woodsman skills, um, those kind of things. I'm going to call it boondocking. That's going to be my my trademark I'm going to use that boondocking term a lot so when you're boondocking there are all kind of boondocking skills and uh, so as I get better at doing this I'll I'll, uh, I'll do specific videos on boondocking skills for instance um, making fire right uh, with a bow drill my goodness, I there's a lot of ways to make fire, right? I mean, I've I've seen so many YouTube videos on how to make fire. Um, bow drill, which is you know stick fire, uh, and then there's um, fire fire starters. There's all kinds of fire starters that you can get on the on the uh, net. You'll see everybody talking about all the different ways you can start fire. Um, then there's the ferro ferrocinium rods those are really nice i that's my preferred method the ferrocinium rod uh i have a six inch six inches long by half inch in diameter ferrocinium rod and um you can get i mean so many fires started with this thing it'll probably outlast me i may have to will this thing to my grandchildren <laughs> i mean that's how long they last so 
Uh, but that's one way to, that's my, my preferred way to start a, a fire. But if you didn't have a ferrocinium rod, I think, you know, one of the greatest skills you can have as a boondocker is to be able to uh, start a fire with a, a bow drill. Uh, I haven't done that yet. The last time I started a fire like that, I was in the Marine Corps and I was in the Philippines. We were there for a month. Um, we were having jungle training out in the Philippines. And so we had a little Philippine guide. He showed us how to make a stick fire like that. Didn't use a bow drill, but we used a piece of bamboo and you cut the bamboo in half. You cut a little slit in the bamboo and then you use like a uh, another piece of bamboo and you just keep rubbing it back and forth. And uh, it's the same thing. It's a friction fire, right? You did a friction fire with bamboo. Um, there's no, obviously there's no bamboo here in North America that I know of. Or in, I'm in New England, by the way. So in general, I'm in New England. Um, so I'm not going to give any like real coordinates because I don't want anybody uh, calling in airstrikes on me. So <laughs> um, anyway, I'm somewhere in New England. I may have alluded to where uh, where I actually am a little bit earlier in the video. Uh, that's not really important, but I'm in New England somewhere. So yeah, I, I mean, I'm going to try to like do some specific videos on boondocking skills uh, as time goes on. So I'll practice, you know, friction fire at home. Um, I may do my first friction fire at home in the basement and we'll see how that goes. I might, you know, I mean, so here's, here's another question I'll say. Since it's, it's like, really, it's been over 30 years since I, I made a friction fire. I was in the Marine Corps in the Philippines when I did that. So this is going to be like a whole new experience. Would you rather me practice doing it and get it right and then show you that video or would you like me to show friction fire from the beginning and show you all the mistakes i make as i'm going along to getting to to be able to do a friction fire what do you think would be put it in the comments below and let let me know if you if you want to see it fresh and every and all the mistakes i make or if you want me to you know practice and polish my my game first and then show you how friction fire is done. Um, maybe there's value in seeing all the mistakes I make. So, but let me know what you think about that. We'll see how that goes. All right, I'm going to cut this short now. Um, I don't want, you know, I don't want it to be too long. So I think I'm at 39 minutes. I think, well, that's 40 minutes. It's going to, it's going to come up on 40 minutes. I'd like to maybe keep my segments to 20 minutes a piece. I, I wasn't paying attention. So, but I think 20 minute sections would be better anyway. Uh, I'm going to finish my coffee, my cigar, and, and then I'm going to pack up and head on back down the trail because uh, I'm starting to cool off. So uh, I'll, I'll get with you later. Uh, for now, I think we're good to go. So one thing I usually uh, forget to do at the end of my videos is uh, <laughs> close out the videos. So I'm making this uh, really quick closeout video um, for one of my previously uh, done videos, actually the first one that I'm going to put up on YouTube. And uh, so I just want to say, you know, thanks for watching. And I am Corporal Rivet from Honey Badger Boondocking. And as always, improvise, adapt, and overcome.
and we are good to go.